Hello everybody, back again Saul here for a brand new series. Today, we're starting a series where I play uh, some Atari classics. And today we're starting with the, uh, I wouldn't say the greatest, but p possibly one of the most famous Atari games. Pac-Man. Oh my god. So, we're off to a great start with that starting noise. Uh, oh. oh man, I died right off the bat. Okay, let's get this. Okay, I was gonna get that fruit up there, but apparently not. The game had other things, had other thoughts. Anyway. So, Pac-Man. Uh, for the Atari 2600. Uh, what is there to say about this game? First of all, it's really bad. Oh, I died. Game over? Oh, I thought that was game over already. Apparently not. Alright, so why is this game so bad? Uh... Well, this is actually a prototype version that Atari decided to release uh, to capitalize on the holiday season. Uh, so, Atari got the rights to to produce uh, Namco arcade games for the Atari 2600. And uh, since video games were a hot commodity at the time, I got a game over. Let's start over. Uh, they decided, hey, let's do Pac-Man, because Pac-Man was really popular, right? So, uh, they handed it off to the developer and said, alright, make a game. And, uh, I think it only had, like, four months of development time, and he came up with this. This actually uses a lot of really cool programming tricks I was reading up on this game. Um, so, this game is on a four kilobyte cartridge, right? The ROM is only four kilobytes. Um, uh, at the time that this came out... Eight kilobyte cartridges were available, but they were fairly new and they were more expensive, so... To cut costs, they've made it on a four kilobyte cartridge. And, uh... I only had, like I said, it only had four months of development time. And, uh... Uh, the developer showed it to Atari and said, alright, here's the prototype version. And they said, alright, well, it's holiday season, so let's pop... Oh no, I was so close. Um... So they said, alright, holiday season, let's publish this prototype version. Really? Um, so let's publish the prototype version. And uh, that's what they did. Uh, keep in mind, at the time, there were only about 10 million Atari 2600 consoles out that people owned. And Atari decided, let's produce 12 million cartridges. Because every person who owns an Atari 2600 is going to buy this game. And 2 million new people will buy the console just to play this game at home. Uh, um, which is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's stretching it a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the CEO of Atari saw this game and said, Nah, people aren't going to like this. But then they did it anyway, because money. Uh, anyway, pro programming tricks that this game uses. Uh, so the ghosts on screen only show up once every four frames. Only one ghost is uh, visible at any time. Uh, the the pellets that we're eating here are actually used um, actually use the same sprite that the walls of the maze use. And to save space, uh, the programmer decided to make the maze have sharp corners instead of rounded corners like the arcade game. Which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, how ridiculous is that? 10 million consoles out that have been sold, and they say, let's make 12 million cartridges. Uh, I think they sold them through, like, Sears, too, and then they had, like, special Sears-branded Pac-Man cartridges. They say, like, Sears on the, on the label and stuff. Which is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it's not the developer's fault. He made a prototype. Uh, he was working on way weaker hardware than what the, uh, the console cabinet was. Oh! That was two ghosts in one place, and it, they split. Okay. Yeah, the ghosts do that a lot in this game, I, I find. They bunch up, and then you don't realize that it's actually two ghosts in a place. Um... But anyway, yeah, the Atari 2600 way weaker than an arcade carbon carbon cabinet, obviously. Um, I think it had like one sixteenth of the memory or something. Uh, 
So like the ROM size, the Atari only had one sixteenth the size, and then the uh, or well, well, the cartridge, and then um, well the Atari twenty six hundred has no video RAM, so no video RAM, whereas the arcade cabinet had like two kilobytes of video RAM or something like that. So yeah, way weaker hardware. They did what they could. This wasn't meant to be the final product. And uh, Atari decided to be money hungry and publish the uh, to publish the uh, the prototype version. Um, yeah, I don't know. So Pac-Man's redrawn every frame. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other programming tricks it used here. Um, so since this, uh, since the pellets use the same sprites as the walls, I'm re I remember another trick here. The game redraws Pac-Man and the maze every frame. And, uh, oh, I'm trapped. I wasn't trapped, I could have gone down there. Anyway, um, it redraws Pac-Man and the maze every frame, and then, uh, it just excludes whatever's been eaten. But yeah. Man, this developer was really creative if you think about it, like, using the same sprite for the, the pellets and the the maze. Oh man, the way he was able to take a, uh, take an arcade game and basically boil it down to this. Uh, also the maze is very different. Very different, very simple. Uh, it's, it's horizontal as opposed to vertical on the arcade game. Oh man. The noises aren't great either, but that's just Atari. That's just the Atari 2600. Just, I don't know. Very, very, uh, I don't know. Unpleasant sounds. Let's go get this power pellet up here. Let's see if we can reach it. Uh, we made it. Get wrecked. Can you win without getting the power pellets? Do those count as pe pellets too? Like that you have to get to beat the level? I don't know. Last power pellet. All right, let's just get as much as we can here. We did it. We beat it. All right. Well, now that I've bored you for like almost eight minutes talking about the history of this game, uh, yeah, I think that's enough. I'm I'm done torturing you, and we'll call it here. So that's going to do it for us for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!